All right. Hey, everybody. This is Carrie Oberbrunner, and I have with me Dr. Joe, and we are in a fantastic book launch, folks. This is going to be a ton of fun tonight. Dr. Joe, um, first of all, let me read your bio, okay, because this is a very special day. And tell me exactly how to pronounce your last name. Famularo. Famularo. I love it. I love it. People butcher my name all the time. I want to get yours right. So Dr. Joe Famulero has been an educational leader for over 30 years. He has been a teacher, a director, a principal, an assistant superintendent, and superintendent of schools. Dr. Joe enjoys presenting on topics of teaching, learning, and leadership. And he has a distinguished educational background, holding a doctorate in education and leadership and technology, as well as having teacher certifications in K through 12 mathematics, reading, special education, elementary and music. And we might even get a little treat today about uh, your, your music. So Dr. Joe, welcome to the uh, book launch tonight. Great to be here, Carrie, thank you. I mean, it's always great to see you. Oh man, I'll tell you what, I'm excited about your book. I started reading this on the airplane. This is first of all, this is a thick book. And I mean that in the best way. I mean, sometimes you get these little pamphlets that people write and that's not bad, but this is some serious uh, endorsements right here. Why did you write this book, Dr. Joe? Well, I've been in education for over 30 years. Um, I, I love it. I love every, every day going to work. I work with inspiring people. Um, I've, I've really been blessed to having a, a family that has inspired me and, and, uh, um, the individuals at my work. And I, I've always written, I've written songs my whole life. I wrote my first dance for my wife, Anne. <laughs> and I just wrote a song a couple years ago for my mom who turned 90 um, called Thank You, Mom. So it's been very special. So I've been writing ideas about leadership my whole life and uh, um, got an opportunity the last few years to really fine tune it and put it together. And it's really, uh, we're starting really a grassroots, just as, you know, just gonna, going to write a small book and it, has really uh, exploded, so I'm really excited about it. Talk to us about the book because you use this fantastic metaphor. I see it in your background. I see it right on the book cover. What is the meaning behind this? Yes, yeah, so, so it has a, a nautical theme, right? And um, the theme is that we're on a journey in life. And you're, it's the, the book is really separated in four parts. So we build our life ship, which is ourselves. That's part one. Then it's planning, planning the journey, uh, creating your life maps. And those are all, and we'll get into it, inward living because you're creating it yourself. And then you launch your boat, you launch into the seas, into the uh, calm and storms of life. And then you're holding that captain's wheel, making the adjustments and every adjustment you make will have an effect. So it's about intentional living using that captain's wheel. And then the last part is reaching your destination, imagining yourself pulling into port with the sunset and you've reached your goal and then planning for the next goal. So I love the nautical theme. Um, my grandfather will get into, inspired me, who was a great American sailor uh, theme in the book. So, um, you know, that's why we use the captain's wheel and every aspect in the book has ships and, and uh, various uh, components of the nautical theme. I love it. Fantastic. So let's talk about this first question here. What are the ways that people can live inward and outward? So IOU is a, is a it really, IOU Life Leadership is a foundational framework for positive and effective intentional living. So it's living with intention. Mm -hmm. um, and IOU, here's the catch. So IOU, in, I stands for inward living, O stands for outward living, and then you is for upward living. And all day long, we're living in either two modes. Inwardly is when we're thinking, we're by ourselves, mm. or outward living when we interact with others. So it's an IO day, right? And like based that. on your inward and outward living, there's a byproduct, something comes to you that you have basically no control over, and we hope it's upward living. And upward living is when you receive more peacefulness, happiness, healthiness, and excellence in your life, which I call your PH2E. So IOU, you know, it's a, it's a catchy acronym. It's about inside out, upward living. There's a, so much research on the inside out approach. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the theme throughout the book. 
Wow. Wait, how did this come to you? Because that is uh, quite unique. I've never heard that before. Wait, where did that come to you? Well, I've always, uh, you know, from studying and, and uh, researching inward outward is, is, is a classic, right? Everything's the inside out approach. Um, when you play an instrument, you think inwardly first what you're going to play, you project it outwardly. And then I kept thinking all the, the research and discussions on those two modes, but the, there's missing a third mode. You know, it's the byproduct. What happens based on that? So if you live inwardly and outwardly in a positive and effective manner, you get some good upward living, um, which is very positive. If you're living inwardly and outwardly in a, in a negative manner, you're downward living. So that's the opposite, IOD living, where your life ship is sinking. And then we have this middle ground, which we call IOW, inward, outward, wayward living. And that's wayward is really, there's no clear direction. It's average. Most of us are wayward living, right? We go through the motions, we're autopilot. Um, but the whole point is to try to keep pushing to upward living. So um, mm. you have those three levels. And by living positive and effective intention, you'll keep moving towards that positive PH2E, peacefulness, happiness, healthiness, and excellence. That's fantastic. Tell me about, you mentioned, you said your grandfather? Yes. What's, what's, what's his story? How does he relate to the book? Um, very, you know, special person in our family, Vincent Famularo. Uh, he uh, told us great, great lessons. My, when I say us, my cousins, my family. But they lived in Italy, uh, 1900s. They had a shipping company, my grandfather. In Italy, they would... Uh, ship goods from Italy to France. They had two 165 foot sails, uh, sail, uh, schooners. And one day a storm came and my grandfather tells us a story. So that what they do is they row the boats out the, into the bay and let it bob up and down for the storm. And he said, this one I knew was different, Joey, right? <laughs> That's what he called. And when the storm came, the ships capsized and that was the end of the uh, shipping wow. company in the business. So they didn't stop. He said we had to keep moving. So what they did is they have to go to America. So they gave my grandfather, he was 13 years old, $30 in a black trunk and sent him to America by himself. And his cousin was there. But he did uh, uh, amazing things, uh, you know, met, his, met his, his, uh, his uncle and then ended up joining uh, uh, the World War I was involved in World War II, um, a great leader, gave many great stories, and then brought the whole family over. So we owe everything to him, but he was an amazing person. So every chapter starts off with a story about uh, Vincenzo, Vincent Famularo, and his whole life, and how he lived a life of integrity. Um, just an amazing person. So did he embody the IOU? Absolutely. Concept? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so it's almost like you write this, you write this book, but then you flesh it out with his stories from a, a previous generation. Absolutely. So it, it basically living within your control, you know, understanding what you have control over versus the uncontrollables. And many times we focus on things we have no control over and then the results, uh, you know, won't be positive and, and, and effective. So um, he always focused on, you know, find out what you have control over, focus on those areas and then you'll be more successful. That's awesome. So I was reading your book today and there's part of it about your son who had a soccer injury. And I could, I, you know, I can relate to that because I'm a father. I thought that your analogy was, was perfect because you were tempted to worry, you know, like most parents, you're tempted to want to save your kid, prevent him from pain. Take us into that story because I feel like that was a beautiful uh, embodiment of your book. Yeah. And, you know, and a great example of the things we have control over versus the things we don't. Um, yeah. So that was a, you know, he's a fabulous soccer player. He made a great play defensively, but he went down and he doesn't usually stay down. This time he stayed down. I knew something was bad. And when I walked over, you could see the bone coming through his skin. He broke his collarbone. So, I mean, and as you know, collarbones are very painful. There's really oh, yeah. nothing you can do. Um, in the first few days, you just have to live with it. So, you know, we brought him home and uh, really tried to give him comfort. But instead of kept, you know, instead of saying, why did this happen? You know, I can't believe it. All the negative things is taking me, taking time away from me. Um, you know, thinking about the things I can do, you know, the things that I can do to help him. So 
again, focusing on what do you have control over? And it's hard when you have high emotions, you know, and, and especially when, when a loved one is, is hurt. But to be effective and to comfort that person is really to just, again, focus on the things you have 100% control over and the things you don't have control over. And that's really the trick of, uh, of IOU living. It's, it's focusing on what you have control versus you don't. And many times we don't realize it, but there's so many things we do have control that we don't focus on. And we focus so much on the things we don't have control over. So, yeah. um, you know, that's how, how me many out. people, uh, you know, last fall, whatever political party they were involved in, how many people um, lost time, you know, because of the the election, just both sides and, and this type of thing. Like we missed some of that IOU leadership, something we can control, which is our own lives. We're going to give away some prizes here. And I'll tell you what, man, this is a pretty cool hat. So... <laughs> I got one of these in the mail here and, uh, you know, um, talk to us about the, the logo and we're going to be giving away. Uh, oh, <laughs> hey, look at that. All right. Somebody's got to take a screenshot of that one. That's good. So who wants one of these? And uh, we're going to give we're going to give a couple away to the most engaged member person who tags people, shares this. But talk to us about the uh, about the hat. And what it what it symbolizes? Yeah, it's I O inspiration. So you know, and again, I O U. Typically, you owe someone something, but in this case, you owe yourself inspiration every day to inspire yourself, find inspiration, and inspire others. So I O inspiration is going to be um, another section on the website where we'll put motivational quotes uh, from great thinkers. We'll put quotes from I O U life leadership, and uh, you know. You know, so, you know, that'll be a whole nother area that we want to get into. Well, I'll tell you what, we have Amanda Rose who says she wants one. Um, we have Ricky who's managing the comments tonight. So if you want one, folks, share this live stream, tag someone who needs this amazing book. Let's talk about the forward. That is no joke. <laughs> to get a forward from Stephen Covey number one Wall Street and New York Times. And I read his forward. It was amazing. I mean, this guy really believes in you and your book. How did that endorsement happen? Because that's pretty rare. Yeah. So um, to go back to, to where um, my school district, um, we're a leader in me school. We work with Franklin Covey. Um, we've done amazing things where we teach all of the kids leadership skills. We teach our staff, the Board of Education. So we work based on the seven habits of highly effective yeah. uh, of people. Um, and so we've been doing it for years. I, I read the book Seven Habits in 1992, and that really changed my life. And that's another uh inspiration for me for this book but they came and they recognized this as a lighthouse district there are lighthouse schools all over the country all over the world yeah but we were the first lighthouse district in new york state so we're the first lighthouse district in uh new york state and the second in the world so i have a relationship with um franklin covey and sean covey who's one of steven's son ones runs the school division um, I had a chance to talk to Stephen Covey uh, in a conference. And then Stephen M. R. Covey is, is another son who wrote The Speed of Trust, which is back yeah. there. Huge. Uh, you may not see it. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, number one bestseller, as you said, uh, millions of copies sold. And a good friend of mine, Gary McGuey, who's a facilitator for uh, Franklin Covey, showed the work to Stephen. Um, and, you know, we just figuring out, let's get his opinion on it. And he loved it, loved the idea and wrote the forward and wrote some pretty uh, amazing things in there. And that was a game changer. Once oh, I yeah. got that, I mean, um, it just really changed everything. And it, I, I got it kind of earlier on and it really just got me into, you know, fine tuning this book. That's so good. As we were preparing for this launch tonight, um, it's going to help so many people, by the way. I love it. You owe it to yourself and others. 12 lessons from a great American sailor um, for navigating your personal and professional life. We're going to put on your I am an author video. And this is something special we do with within Author Academy Elite. We're honored to be your, your publisher. I mean, just to produce such an amazing work of art that you did. It's fantastic. But why, why is this I am an author video significant? Because didn't you record this 
before the book. I mean, that's kind of what we do. We want, we want to trick people's brain into thinking it's already happened so that they don't get caught with writer's block. But let's talk about yeah. that. We're, yeah. we're, we're going to see a video from a while back. What what are we going to see? Yeah, well, first, I mean, I just have to compliment you, Carrie, for, uh, you know, the, the, the whole publishing company here. I mean, I, you know, the, the uh, inspiration, the support. I mean, it's been a journey. Um, so this was over a year ago, I think. Uh, I think it was yeah, more than a, yeah, a year. And, uh, you know, what a great tool that you give. To, you, mm -hmm. know, you have to project that the book is complete. <laughs> and say i am an author and and that's looking ahead yeah, we call that beginning with the end in mind yes you know uh, having that final destination clearly uh, visualized so then you could you know create that journey towards it so um music is a big part of my life so i started it off with a little jamming <laughs> in the uh, i am an author video so all right all Let right go. well, <laughs> we're gonna get this thing going and maybe i can talk Dr. Joe into uh, playing live here in a moment. We'll see. But I'm going to bring this right on. I'm going to start at the very beginning. We'll get the volume up. And again, this is from September 5th, 2019, before the book was done, even thought of. And here we go. So. <laughs> My name is Dr. Joseph Famularo. Everyone calls me Dr. Joe. I'm an educational leader and so fortunate to be surrounded by hundreds of inspiring educators every day for almost 30 years now. I'm an author and have studied, researched, and written and have spoken on the topic of leadership for many years. And now I've written a book that I'm very excited about and I'd like to share with you. The title is I Owe You Life Leadership. You owe it to yourself and others. It's a foundational framework for intentional living and life leadership. Now, typically when you hear I owe you, you owe someone something. Well, in I owe you living, you owe it to yourself and others to become a life leader. Here's the catch. I owe you stands for inward, outward, and upward. You see, we're always living in either two modes every moment of our lives. We are either living inwardly or outwardly. Inward is when you're alone thinking the life we have and we're just thinking in our minds, which happens most of the day. Outward living is when we're interacting with others and the world. Two modes. The whole book is about examining these two modes, your inward and outward living. And in the book, I provide what I call the 12 essential life anchors as a framework to live inwardly and outwardly in a positive and effective manner. And when you live inwardly and outwardly in a positive and effective manner, you create a dynamic positive culture and receive the upward life living gifts of peacefulness, happiness, healthiness, and excellence, which I call your PH2E. IOU living leads to IOU life leadership. I'm a life learner and observer and have had so many life leaders around me my whole life. And I'd like to share one person that really stands out as a life leader and had a major impact on me and many others. And that person is Vincenzo Famularo, my grandfather. He came to America in 1908 all by himself at 13 years old and did amazing things for his family, the country and many generations. Grandpa Vincenzo's life leadership is a reoccurring theme in the book, and I can't wait to share it with you. Lastly, I love hearing everyone's story on Author Academy. It's amazing that we have Carrie and the team as partners, and I really look forward to a long relationship. Thank you for listening, and have a great day. See you soon. I love that. <laughs> how, how surreal is that to hear that now? Back when it was, I mean, this was pre-COVID. This was September 2019. How surreal is that for you? Yeah, no, that I haven't seen that, so that was great. I mean, I mean, that that's amazing. And what's interesting is, uh, you know, again, having the themes. That was before we had Stephen Covey's endorsement. But you had so much clarity even back then. That's amazing. 
Yeah. Well, that, that initial concept, uh, you know, was pretty cemented in, in my mind there, but, um, you know, that was great. I mean, it was definitely an inspiring time. Well, talk to us. Uh, there's a lot of authors watching right now and some of your author coaches are here um, as well. I've seen them chime in. How important is it? Because, you know, 82 percent of the population wants to write a book, Dr. Joe, but very few people do. And we talked to John Lee Dumas earlier today. I mean, you're you're here with us on a, on a big stage. Books are tough to write. What kind of tips would you give to people? who are saying, you know what, wow, Dr. Joe accomplished something I never could. What what words of encouragement would you give to them? Yeah, well, you know, first look for that inspiration. You know, there are people out there um, that are giving you positive comments, take them in, you know, really absorb them. A lot of times we get that and we say, oh, it's not me. And I have to tell you, I didn't think I was a writer at all until uh, a, a, a a teacher, a professor in college wrote me a note, which I have hanging in my office that said, you're a writer. And ever since then, that really, that person inspired me. So I have little symbols of those people. So again, think back in your lives, who are the important people. Life's about relationships. That's what Outward Living is. It's interacting with others and uh, building that high trust. Um, but, um, you know, what I did was, is, is constantly just put words on paper. Yeah. And actually, I didn't do that. I dictated. So I drive about 40 minutes each way. I drive on what's called Ocean Parkway in Long Island. And it's beautiful. You have the bay on one side and the ocean on the other. And I dictated most of this book. And I got a great app that I used. And uh, 40 minutes one way, 40 minutes the other way. I got a good hour in every day. And I did that uh, you know, for months and then just, you know, use that information and, and started the process. The editing process is a, is a, uh, is a real challenge, uh, but uh, yeah. it all worked out again. You know, the team there helped me out. I love that though. I mean, I, I haven't talked to too many people that have dictated a book, but you know, it makes tons of sense. People have time when they're commuting and a lot of people unfortunately die with their story still inside them. When you produce a book, you are literally giving birth to your legacy, something that is eternal. This book's gonna be around forever. But I know that that thought hacks a lot of people. A lot of people think, oh my gosh, if I do put something out, it will be around forever. And then they worry and then they discourage themselves. Dr. Joe, how did you overcome perfectionism? Because perfectionism can hack a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. There's, and and, and the, you know, we talk about that. So those are the outward world pressing onto you, right? So that happens all day long, that outward world pressing onto you. And you have 100% control on how you want to react to it. You can't control it from pressing on to you, but you have 100% control of your outward living on how you react to it. So that that's that was really you know the game changer. You know what are the things we have control over? Our inward thinking. You know we can create our own inward mind, our thinking, our being, our outward actions, and our outward reactions to things that happen to us. So constantly things were saying, no, you can't do this. Uh, you know, that chapter doesn't work. Uh, you know, your ideas are crazy. You know, those things happen all the time. And you have to just keep plugging along, keep pushing and saying, no, I have a message. Like you said, we all have a story. And yeah. just keep writing it down. And, and uh, you know, eventually you have work. You got, a book. You, know, you got a book. You have a manuscript. That's so good. Awesome. We're going to give away another hat. So, uh, Ricky, pick someone else. Uh, I think Amanda might have got that first one. But again, Dr. <laughs> Joe, if you want to put yours on, I, I love this thing. And uh, I think, you know, I don't look good at most hats, but I, I, I'm going to say I like this one. <laughs> All right. So, uh, again, you got the nautical theme. And uh, listen, somebody just bought 10 copies. Uh, what do you say to Michael? <laughs> That's awesome. I appreciate that. I mean, you know, one of the anchors in the book, uh, and uh, we have 12 essential life things based on, you know, principles is life vision. Uh, you know, what is your life vision? And, uh, you know, do we spend the time to write down what that is? And mine is to try to inspire others to find their talents and skills so they receive some upward living. So when someone says that to me, I mean, you know, it's a gift. I, I appreciate huge. that. Yeah, because yeah, as an author, I mean, 
you're, you're, you just saw 10 lives being changed. And that's powerful because, I mean, it puts it all into perspective. I love the book, how you've outlined it. I mean, you really took time to, to make this happen. Uh, talk about a lot of these paradigms because these are some really intense, well-thought-out uh, teaching tools. I see your teaching coming through. Talk about talk about even this this image for a moment. Yeah, yeah, that's the the life living wheel, and the twelve anchors. There are six inward anchors, and that's the arrows pointing into the anchor, and there are six outward anchors. So mm -hmm. you know, you imagine yourself as the anchor. The anchor is solid. That's the, that's principles, the life principles that are always universal and timeless, and each arrow pointing in are six inward. Um, living anchors the outward anchors are on the handles and remember outward is steering into the into the world so you grab onto your outward anchors and that's when you interact with others in the world the foundational anchor is self-culture that first one and i coined that 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 term which i i like because um it's who we are right we walk into a room we talk about culture we walk into an a, you know an organization but we have a self-culture what's your aura what do you bring when someone yes. into your world so um, that's the first foundational anchor, and the other five help support that with what's your vision, what's your daily mission, what's your principles, your life values, and your life goals. And you put that together to create your self-culture or a self-culture statement. Self-culture statement. I'll tell you what, man. Give us some tips because there's, there's people here wondering, oh, my gosh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, How do you do that? Yeah. So in the book, uh, let me just uh, so I say it's your aura, your look, your brand, your style and your I am. It is who you are right now. And the good news is you have 100 percent control over it. However, if you don't intentionally examine it and improve it, you may go through life not knowing how your self culture presents when outwardly interacting with others. And if you don't, others will create your self culture. So Ooh. I have these questions here that um, can you easily answer the following? And it's what page, something like, what, what page are you on? This is 235. Okay. I'm there. So the questions are, who are you? Mm -hmm. What do you do? What makes you unique? What should, why should others care? How would you describe yourself? What do you stand for? How do you describe the ideal you? What are your unique talents, personal qualities, and accomplishments? How do you want to be perceived? What are you passionate about? And it's probably difficult to answer these questions automatically, as for most people. However, think about it. It's about you, right? Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, your most important asset is yourself. So to take the time to actually write down and answer those questions, start developing your self-culture statement, who you are, so you can answer those questions. That's so good. I Listen, when I like a book, I kind of, I don't know if you can see this here, but I, I fold it over and, man, I... I start eating up my books here, but this oh, yeah. this really got me. This 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 part in your book today, it That's says, um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, page yeah, twenty six. <laughs> yeah, tell us about that because if 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 you fit with any of these ten folks, it's a big warning light. Talk talk to us. Can you read those ten? Yeah, and and that's really when you when you're in that autopilot lifestyle where you you go to work, you come home, you have dinner, you watch TV, you go to bed, you wake up, and it's just this constant autopilot, um, and that's the way we're living. That's I O W living. We, we we talked about in the middle. Um, you know, that's where you have apathy, indifference, un just unfit, um, mediocrity. So uh, this is. Uh, Nicole Bloom discussed these 10 signs of living on autopilot. And do any of you, any of these describe you? You dread the day ahead. Hmm. Your daily routine is predictable. You do things without thinking. You can't seem to put your phone down. You stay deep in thought about things other than the task at hand. You have a difficult time remembering. You can't seem to let go. You're not making meaningful progress. You say yes more than you say no. And that's, that's a big one. You know, uh, you know, there's a better life to be lived. Wow. I read that and that, that busted me up because <laughs> many years ago I was that person. And at about 35 years old, I said, I can't do it anymore. And I made steps to leave my 
my day job. Right. But many people don't do that. Many people say, you know, it's too much change. It's too much pain. I'll just go through the motions. This book really wakes up people. I mean, is that is that part of the goal? You want to wake up the world? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's really to look at your life intentionally, examine your life, gain greatest self awareness, reach, reach peak performance. Um, it, it's really about living with intention. Again, we have this one precious life, and you know, we go through it, go through the motions. Um, you know, let's try to get the most out of it, and let's try to examine inwardly who we are. Um, and and it's a real simple, uh, you know, again, way to think about it. And during your day, you know, think about how much am I living inwardly? How much am I living outwardly? And inwardly is really just when you're alone thinking by yourself. There's no one around. That's inward living. And how much time are you interacting with others and outward living? And then the big question is, what do you do when you're inward living? What are you thinking about? Mm. Are you always thinking about the future? I got to do this, my to do's. So I have this whole section on your I future. Or are you thinking about the past? No, I can't believe it happened. Um, you know, why did it happen? And thinking about negative experiences. Or are you living in the I now? And I say I, it's inward now, you know, where you're, you're experiencing life at that moment. Again, you do this as an exercise and you start to start saying, wow, I'm always in the future. I'm never living in the moment. Mm. Um, so the inward living is really analyzing that inward life. What do you do during that time? And then it gives you tools and intentional strategies to try to, you know, get more PH2E, you know, push out of it. All right. All right. So listen, folks, which one of you would like a copy of this book? I'm telling you, this is not light reading and and i mean that in a good way this is a book that you go through slowly very few people in life are willing to go slow and draw out from, i mean this is why people say life goes by in a blink because they're not slowing down and i mean right, right? guilty right? right so when I, when you're a kid life goes by very slowly because you're you're just you're more present you're more in the moment but as adults we just kind of distract ourselves intentionally right. this book wakes you up uh we have people saying they want one um so so this is a highly sought after book we have a few copies to give away um what is your goal for jan as uh as we send jan one no what, what, do you you just, what you just said, slow and steady, and, and you know, and that's what we need to do. And and the book, even though it's thick, has 120 illustrations. So I like yes. I like pictures. <laughs> I do too, man. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the uh, the the uh, right the inward life ships. And it and again, I think being an educator, when you have illustrations, oh. you have pictures, I love that it. help you to uh, get the concept. So it has 120 illustrations. Every chapter ends with a captain's log. Um, yeah. And that summarizes the chapter. So you can go right to the, ca the captain's log. And then it has a daily voyage, a, a task, and then also an activity. And at the end of the book, it has IOU foundational concepts. So all of the concepts are summarized in the back of the book and with a section. And then another section is IOU definitions. <laughs> so okay. the book has, uh, you know, a, a lot of areas, you know, from an education point. And you really don't have to read it from cover to cover. You, if you read the first three chapters, you can jump around. Yeah, there's the captain's log. <laughs> I love how you laid it out. I mean, you really laid it out in a way that the metaphor goes through the entire book. It's fun. In fact, Joe, you are a fun guy. I'm going to ask you if you would be willing to play your electric guitar oh. <laughs> live. How many people want to hear that? Listen, when I was a young kid, I, 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 this is a true story, Dr. Joe. My last name's Oberbrenner. My cousins were Shotsman and Shotsman. And I, I formed a band called SOS. And it lasted one day. That's how bad I was at guitar. <laughs> and then I had to sell it. But listen, I want to hear some good electric guitar. Let's let's hear this. Well, it actually, you know, it can be a great example of IOU living. Um, let me get this. When you think about it, you know, before when you play an instrument, you think inwardly first of what you want to play. You have an, a thought. So I have a thought right now. And then you play it outwardly. <laughs> And 
and then you put, and then there's a byproduct. Could you hear that? Oh, I heard it. Okay. And the byproduct is that feeling. So there's really IOU inward, outward, and then you get the byproduct. And the thing is, everybody feels a different, right? You feel something different from it. So if I play something a little bit more like mellow. <laughs> Again, different feeling, different inward feeling and outward feeling, or something like this. <laughs> that is good. That is good. Sound. And then one more. tell you what man that's how i wanted to play i certainly <laughs> could not do that um how long did it take you like let's talk about music i mean education music author you're this renaissance man where does all this come from a very musical family but i have to tell you um my cousin dom famularo which you have to check him out dom okay. he's a they, he's a world famous drummer and you know, they call him the drumming uh, ambassador of the world when i was eight years old he was 18 he's 10 years older than me would drive to my house and give me guitar lessons and he was a drummer <laughs> but he knew the importance of music and uh came every week and got me inspired another person that inspired me and ever since then i've been playing you know for for many 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 years um you know my kids play music and we sing and it's just a great outlet for everyone i mean music is is just a you know a beautiful thing we have in life give, give me a couple guitarists who inspire you i have a guess i can share it but in fact i'm gonna share it who knows jimi hendrix uh, sure, that's absolutely one. He, you know, absolutely. Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, th there's so many. Even jazz guitarists, Wes Montgomery. Some classic. Uh, um, yeah, I could go on and on. Oh, Southern man. rock was a big uh, uh, music in my life. The Omen Brothers, Marshall Tucker Band. Um, you got it all. I love it. <laughs> well, people, uh, I love what jo Joseph said. That's no hockey stick. <laughs> so. <laughs> So um, you have people saying, hey, what about making your book uh, into an audio book? Have you thought about that? Absolutely. Um, you know, that's what we have to talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely would want to do that. That would be great. But, um, uh, you know, again, slow and steady. And, and, and that's what you mentioned. So I use the crock pot principle. The crock okay. pot is when you cook in a crock pot, it takes eight hours, right? You let it you let it simmer. You can smell it in, in the in the house all day. My wife cooks yes. hot roast, as opposed to the microwave principle, where you want the quick fix. So, um, I'm I'm enjoying this whole process. Um, you know, taking it slow and steady, and just keep building on it. That's that's awesome. We have a couple more gifts to give away, but first, I got to ask you this question. Um, you have spoken about the benefits of living life intentionally. In this book, do you have any tools to help us do that? I know that you you, re you referenced the captain's log. Do you have some other tools inside? Yeah, there's, there's so many in here. And, um, you know, again, one of them is that, you know, again, being principle-centered, understanding I is a principle-centered leadership. So there are principles. There's a principle 
about relationships. There's principles of our family. Th these are always correct. They're timeless. But we all have opinions, point of views. I call them life maps, right? We have a, an opinion yes. about learning, about preparation, about empathy, about gratitude. And we need to analyze our life maps because they're not correct, right? So um, good. To, yeah, that's, that's another a tool we have in there with the li three life-preserving uh, dimensions where you look inwardly and outwardly to help you when you're in crisis or having a difficult time. But the life map cycle, I just want to just bring that one. So yeah. when something happens, we normally just react without thinking. So we have mm -hmm. this, what's called life map cycle where you evaluate, calculate, formulate, and then you navigate. Again, it has that nautical theme. And many times we just see something or we hear something and we react with opinion. We never take the time to take the data in and really think about it and maybe mm -hmm. change our opinion, maybe modify it. Um, we're stuck with these opinions our whole life. And yeah, there it is right now. So you observe something, you think about it, you confirm and modify your opinion, and then you act on it. And it just keeps going in a circle. So that, that's a great tool that, that I've used and, and taught that. Um, in, in, in our school district, we do a, a similar version of that. So that's what well, people can tell. Oh, hey, did you say the guy's name was Dom? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Hey. <laughs> Look at that. Well, how cool is that to have um, the drummer who who is 10 years older than you, I think you said, and he mentored you. I mean, is that why you want to give back to people in the educational world? Is that why you're giving back to the other generations? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, education is a, is a wonderful thing. I mean, I just I love going to, to work every day and, and you know, with inspiring. My, our teachers are amazing. Uh, our administrators, our board of education. I mean, it, you know, it's it's an organization. We have a multi-million dollar budget. I mean, it really is uh, uh, an organization and the tools that are in IOU will help in organizations, for family, for teams, or for yourself. Uh, we're putting your website up right now. What are people going to find at your website? IOUliving.com. Yeah, IOUliving.com. Um, You'll see it has a description and uh, of the 12 anchors. Um, I'm going to go there right now. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, I, I'm finding this. This is super cool. So, folks, this is this is a good website here. Watch this here. This, so this is IOU Living, and I like it. I like it. So you have, of course, the book, you, the resources packed full. So folks, if you're finding Dr. Joe resonating with you and this, you know, P H two E, uh, assessment, what, what are they going to find here with this assessment? So again, using the nautical theme, uh, P H two E it's the, the life gifts. That's what we all strive for, right? Peacefulness, happiness, healthiness, and excellence. And they're all very different, right? Peace is the calmness in life. Happiness is the excitement. Healthiness is, is, you know, making sure we're healthy, we get enough rest and we exercise. And then excellent is with the mind. So you take this, it's a self-assessment that you would take, and then you would get this result. Now you see the propeller? Yeah. Each blade represents one of the pH two E's. It's 0% is the middle, it goes out to 100%. And when you take it, you will see the different levels of your pH two E. So you may have tremendous amount of peace, but you're not so happy. Your health might be lower and have high excellence. The whole point is you need a balanced propeller. Without a balanced propeller, your ship is not going to run well. Um, and if you had an unbalanced propeller in a ship, you're going to cause vibration. The ship's going to break down the engine just like your body. So the first goal is to balance your propeller and then enlarge it. So if you have low healthiness, you need to work on your healthiness and get that up to the other propeller. But you'll get a personalized life propeller ph2 propeller when you finish the uh, assessment it's it's very quick um and then you know you could start having your plan uh living intentionally and improving whatever area you need to improve that's so good i love that fantastic so listen my friend um we got a few other things here let's give away another hat so i'm putting mine back on um <laughs> We're talking about the balance propeller, um, man. These these are gonna go. Uh, these are gonna be hot. Are you selling these, by the way? 
I what I have not. I just purchased. I got them put together for this, but maybe we'll do that. Maybe, maybe you will. But we have a, a you know we have another one. So anybody who wants a shout out, um, go ahead and uh, give 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 a big uh, share here. Also, what are your teachers, your students, your your alumni? What are they thinking about this 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 book? <laughs> Very excited. I mean, you know, again, I'm blessed to, to work with such great people. They're so supportive. I mean, you know, you talked about who inspired you. They inspired me every single day. My my uh, administrators, the teachers, the students. I mean, especially in, in what we just went through, and it's just been amazing. We've been open since day one. We've we've had success. I mean, the oh yeah, parents, COVID. I mean, let's yeah. talk about that because COVID. If you don't have IOU set up correct, you're in trouble. How did you use the book to get your, uh, your, your district through COVID? Yeah, well, again, it's, it's, it's thinking about you know, the, the things we have control over and, and focusing on them, what we can do to keep our schools safe, uh, making sure everybody uh, has all the right protocols and the right PPE and all of those things that we had to get involved in. So, uh, you know, absolutely, you know, it's, it's again, not wasting your time on the uncontrollables because every time I'm working on an uncontrollable item, it's taking me away from something I can do. Oh, that's good. Were there times, I mean, I get it. Listen, you're a leader. I'm a leader. Sometimes we just, we get tired. Sometimes we want to throw in the towel. Sometimes you get bad news over and over again. Oh, by the way, look at this on Amazon. Wow. I just looked at this. I looked at your records here, man. Hold on. Um, this we got to celebrate this with you today, right now. Did you know that you are a number one new release on Amazon? Did you know that? <laughs> yes, I, I've seen. I've had a few of those, and it just released today. So that's very exciting. Oh my gosh! Look at this. The paperback, the Kindle. He's got the hardcover. He's got all. Listen, people are buying these things up. Um, this is big time, man. A lot of people don't even write a book. You conquered that. And now you're a number one new release. What's next? <laughs> well, I, you know, the website, uh, you know, again, slow and steady, you know, I'd like to put some, uh, you know, workshop together to, you know, the, to really, uh, fine tune and, uh, the 12 essential life anchors and help others to achieve it. So, uh, yeah, that, that's an, and really just sharing the book and sharing, the concepts with others. Um, so. Oh man, that's good. Well, listen, we got just a couple more minutes. We're going to do some some questions here. Um, let's talk about the, the the call to action, though. Um, you do have a website; people can subscribe. You have the assessment. You have the twelve essential download. The life anchors planning pages. Um, yeah. What's, what, what's up with that? So each in the, so you have this, the 12 anchors in the book and at the end of each chapter are these anchor planning pages. So after we talk about self-culture, um, there's questions and there, it's for planning your self-culture. So I'm pulling out, let's see. Let me get it. Well, I just take, I took out life vision for right now. And each, each anchor has a model. So life vision is the principle of life living and it's the intersection of your purpose potential and passion right what is your purpose in life what is your potential what's your skills and what drives you what's your passion so the the anchor planning pages on page 260 take you through questions to help you to determine that so for your purpose the questions what is my purpose in existence what's giving my what's giving life meaning what is the purpose of my family team or organization and potential what are my unique skills talents and strengths passion what excites motivates and drives me and i love this question for passion if you had a free day to do whatever you wanted to do what would you do i love that one so once you answer that that's your passion right that is so good so on the website you can download it uh it's free uh all of the anchor planning pages so you don't have to write in the book this way it's laid out um and that comes with the book here's a question we got some questions coming in all right. By the way, you ask a question, you might just get a copy. Uh, we, we have a few free copies to give away. Here's a question. 
Do you recommend reading this book on your own or with others, maybe coworkers or in a book club or both? What do you think? Solo group? What do you think? Lisa Marie, I think all of the above. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's a great idea. The, the book, when, you know, the, the subtitle is owe it to yourself and others. But I mean, my suggestion is to do it with a group have, you know, it's that it's laid out that way that you could write, answer these questions as an individual or as a group. So we talk about self family team or organization and that's throughout the whole book. Um, we call FTOs family team organization. So pick one or, or, or any of the others. That's a great question, but, uh, it would work it either way. Oh, it will definitely, um, talk give about her a book. Hey, we'll give her a book. All right. So Ricky, Get her address. We'll give her one. You know, you you got you sent me a hardcover. That thing looks beautiful. How how did that? You know, a lot of authors don't get hardcovers. Um, in Author Academy Elite, we 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 try to get their books in all the versions. Why did you go with the hardcover? Because that's the, it. Just felt like a wow version for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I love purchasing books. I mean, I have them all behind me. I have another room full of full of them, and I love buying hardcovers. There's something about holding a hardcover. Yes. Book. So uh, if I'm writing my first book and Stephen M. R. Covey is doing the forward, I'm gonna create a hardcover. There it is. That's right. <laughs> I love it. So you mentioned your family a little bit. Um, you know, we got ten minutes left. What, what's the legacy that you want to leave with your family? Yeah, that, that's, that's a great question. I mean, um, it, it's about working together as a family, staying together as a family. One of the things we do every year, and we've done this for 20 years, is we write a family vision statement, my family. Ooh. And we do it at actually the end of the year. We actually do it Christmas Eve every year. And really? we, we get together as a family and I write about it in the book and we ask ourselves questions, you know, how, you know, how do we, how should we treat each other? Um, how do we want people to feel when they enter our, our home? We write all these out and we've did this when the kids were little and they were kicking and screaming, believe me, when they were little and, and we, but we worked through it and it's more the process than the product. Yeah. And after we finish, we have a family vision statement. We put it up on the wall and what's great about it is, and they agree on it and, you know, we would write it out. Um, when something happens against the vision, all we have to do is point at it. We don't have to say a word because they created it when we were calm and, and reasonable. So creating family mission statements is a wonderful tool. We did it this past year. We do it every year. Something I highly s suggest. And that's, that's life anchor too. life vision. What is your life vision? What is your family life vision, your team or organization's vision? So you change your, your family vision. It's like, I, I seen, I've seen this every new year. People say, what's your word for the year? You're telling me, and this is the first time I've ever heard this, you actually pick a family vision for the year. Yes, yes. It's the big picture. It's where, you know, where we are, where we want to head. Um, you know, the vision statement is something that's always becoming, right? It's, it's, it's always growing. It's always building. Um, but, uh, you know, as we went through the years, they really started to appreciate it. I have a, I have a 25 year old now and I have two twins that are 17 years old. And uh, my 25 year old added a great piece to it this year. I mean, it's real personal and it, it's just a wonderful exercise. And, you know, I suggest highly suggest it for everyone. Yeah, that's powerful. You know, my guess is one day when they have kids, if they do, they're going to pass that on. It's one of those things where like you said, when they're young, they might do it kicking and screaming, but now that they're getting older, it, it means something to them. Yeah. So, and that's, and that's right. Absolutely. Teaching that lesson for them and that they pass that on. And, and it's that togetherness. It's coming out with that common language together. It's, it's very powerful. What would you say to someone, Dr. Joe, who right now they found this live stream, they're here by accident, even though I don't believe in any accidents. I think things are here for a reason. What would you say to that person who says, man, I want to believe Dr. Joe. I want, I want to, I want to believe that I can do this, but I've just had too many painful things happen in my life to hope to believe again. It's just easier to give up. What would you say to someone like that? Yeah. Yeah. And so 
principles are evident, timeless, universal in all societies. And I didn't invent the principles, right? All I did was organize them, put it in, in a, um, an easy uh, system and, and using an acronym IO note, IOU to help remember it. So, um, so it's really a how to, not a what to. It's giving you tools that will let you, I'm laying out there that you can then try to look inwardly at your inward being and look yeah. at your strengths and try to tap into, you know, the positives and um, what you have control over. And again, yeah. that whole thing, you know, it may be one little thing that, okay, I have control over this particular situation, focus on that, work on that. And then it builds. And then you'll see that in a circle, just gradually grow and then push out all those uncontrollables out of your way and, you know, take that journey on that chip to meet your goal. Wow. Here's what Dom says. Uh, Grandpa Vincent lives on. That's Here. heavy. <laughs> that's my, that's cousin Dom telling it's a uh, grandpa Vincent Chenzo Famularo. That's great. Oh man. Listen, um, what do you want to say to all the people who joined in tonight? Uh, a good crowd. I mean, they've been here throughout. They got a ton of value. What would you say to people who are, you know, just getting excited about the book, your message? Just tell it, tell us something. Yeah. And this is a reflection of, of everyone, you know, that's out there right now. I mean, you know, the people in your lives shape who you are. Um, you know, they shape your opinions. And uh, I just can't thank them enough for the support that they've have given me over the years. And, you know, again, there's so much good that we can get out of life. If we work together as a team, we, we look at the strengths of each other and, and, you know, stay positive and try to be effective and live intentionally on the things you can control. Well, it's no surprise why, why uh, Stephen Covey endorsed it. And you have people just jumping out saying, man, I want to do this family vision. And uh, people are leaving with more purpose. So Dr. Joe, you inspired me. I mean, everything from the I am an author video 18 months ago when it was just an idea to the guitar playing to you studying the mentors to your son's uh, collarbone i mean it's been a very rich night um we're proud of you number one international amazon bestseller and uh now you get to see all these um people read the book and and you get ready for the letters <laughs> Dear Dr. Joe, you don't know me. I read your book, but it changed my life. It's coming, my friend. Uh, thanks for Thank being you. here. Thanks for everything, Carrie. I appreciate everything you did to help me out on this too. Awesome. Well, friends and fans, you're seeing the links right in there. Especially subscribe, download his uh, tools, take the assessment. We need people that, uh, in fact, he says it right here. You owe it to yourself. You do. You owe it to yourself, folks. You were you were created for a purpose, and this book will show you how to do that. Thank you, Dr. Joe, and uh, everybody have a great night. We'll see you. Thank ya. you so much, Gary.